This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Will Eubank, the one of the writers and the director of The Signal, um, a, I don't know, sci-fi thriller. Is that a good app yeah. description of it? sci-fi thriller. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> um, without giving too much away about it, it's about a group of friends who are traveling across the country. They got to get uh, caught up in a... I don't know what you want to call it, a uh, unique experience to keep it it vague, uh, because this is a film that's very much built on um, the unknown, the suspense, which is kind of where I want to begin with this, is you were one of the writers on this. How did this whole concept originate for you? Because it's it's pretty, it's a fun idea. Yeah, um, we were finishing up, uh, I was finishing up editing my first film, Love, and um, just kind of was talking to my friend David Frigerio about some different ideas I was having, and we were riffing back and forth, and we kind of came up with this sort of Twilight Zone ending, and we really wanted to sort of explore a film um, that would sort of lead up to that. And I think around that time I had just watched Catfish, and I really wanted to make a film that sort of like it wasn't gonna be like that at all, but it was Sci-fi gonna be something. Catfish, put that know. right on the poster. <laughs> it was gonna. I wanted to do something where you got in a feeling a, a similar sense of authenticity, very different characters, uh, but uh, that went on this journey, and when they got to some sort of crazy place, uh, instead of finding some sort of weird Facebook lady. They would find some, you know, some serious stuff. That'd actually be kind of spectacular if they found some weird Facebook like at the end of this movie. That would yeah. be a twist. <laughs> Nobody would see you coming. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we brought my little brother on board, Carl Eubank, and um, he started riding with us. And we kind of all worked together as sort of a good team that um, there's a lot of, like, projecting the screen on walls and yelling at each other as we read it and sort of more like a writer's group as opposed to a single sort of form which is nice because it keeps the process a little more engaging and um, not quite so lonely yeah i I can definitely appreciate that sort of mentality uh you are definitely someone who's known as being a very visual director and this film has definitely very much embraced that uh, what is it like, though, for you as a writer? Like, is it something that you visually imagine this so much in your head and you're trying to, like, find a way to put that to the page? Is there a certain amount of it that you couldn't even put to the page because it was so much in your mind? Like, what was that experience like trying to sort of channel those visuals before you made the movie into some sort of, like, tangible literary form? Um You know, for the most part, there are areas that I know are going to be very visually driven. And I probably, um, even if I'm not the champion of that section, I will sort of rewrite that section, you know. Mm. So maybe I'll kind of spit it out and maybe my brother will will take the first. We all sort of take first passes at certain sections. And um, usually I'm very specific about the ending. So, like, maybe the ending will come in a little earlier than the movie or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll champion part of that or David might champion some part, but, but usually if it is a very visually driven section or it goes to some kind of song that I already have in my head, then I will do another couple of passes on it. And then what happens is, is at a certain point, the script is more or less done. And then I start to turn that into a, um, like sort of a written journal form, Mm -hmm. book, storyboard Mm -hmm. thing that has shot maps and lots of pictures that I print up from this like really um, ghetto little picture printer that I have (laughs) and there's lots of paper clips in it and like lots of references to other movies, whether it's like, you know, it was full of so much stuff from like Spaghetti Westerns to Hannah to... Um, like uh, I can't even think like Man on Fire there's so many weird visual references yeah, yeah. that I just plug in and then that really helps when it comes time to shooting because I'll just open that book and that's kind of like my roadmap to the mm. movie so that's the real visual part so in between the script and sort of pre-production I'm working on that book for probably five months or something as someone who's sort of so um, I don't want to say visually strong to to lean too much on it, what is it like to sort of try and embrace the challenges of something like a script and stuff like that? Because, you know, it, it'd be very easy for you just to be like, oh, he's the visual guy. He does the cool visuals. Like, 
hire him for a music video, but like you actually want to be something known as a storyteller probably more than a visual guy. Yeah. Um, what is it like to try and sort of get past being known for visuals and get to be known for your perhaps your movies or your stories or whatever more? Um, you know, I think as I progress, like for, first off, a lot of the stuff that makes people think I am a visual person like they think i'm a commercial director i've never actually done a commercial in my life all my early stuff was spec commercials i was just doing because i was working at a camera rental house mm -hmm. so that was the only tool i didn't really have a regular film school i didn't get into film school so i came up through panavision which is the camera side yeah. so through that i became i started to learn the language of storytelling not necessarily through writing but more so through shooting and um just because i came up that way i, I lean on that but at the end of the day, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how pretty it looks or how, you know, one way or another something is. Um, all that matters is if you feel something, and that can really usually is delivered through the actors or the story or the point. And, uh, you know, in this case, I had a different cinematographer working for me who I thought was just really talented guy, David Landsberg. Um, and there's a lot of times when he wants to reshoot something because the light's not right or this isn't right. But at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. And the slow-mo stuff, a lot of people think like, oh, that's my uh, I am slow-mo guy to J.J. Abrams <laughs> flare guy. And, and that's not even – the only reason I use slow-mo is on a budget when you don't have the money to have six cameras for a big action scene. Mm. I feel like emotionally the slow-mo – some people don't feel this way and I can understand that, but – I feel like the slow mo helps like give you more bang for your buck in terms of feeling something emotive or bigger than it necessarily is on the day, and so that also tends to make people think, "Oh, he's trying to be so fancy." And I'm I'm really actually not trying to be fancy. I'm just trying to get some weight to something that otherwise might just be over in an instant, you know. And I don't have enough money to make enough of those instances uh. to fill the scene so that's why even in love or on this movie there's a lot of slow-mo because it helps um put more weight in an area that would otherwise not have it i guess you, you mentioned an interesting point and that's that you really are trying to do the most bang for your buck and i think i, I don't even remember why i heard the budget was four million or something like that and considering how low the budget is it is pretty amazing how much you get out of it thank what you it, what is it like for you in terms of trying to figure out getting that bang for your buck because if you think about it and from my perspective the other person who i can think of that sort of has some parallels to you and things are working out pretty well for him right now is gareth edwards because oh, yeah. monsters was a phenomenal monster movie which had a very little very low budget but did an amazing job of what little cgi it it had um what, do you have a certain strategy to sort of make sure you get the most from that money? Or what is your sort of take on that situation? Um, yeah, usually that's part of that book process. So I always tell people that, you know, the part, the part where you take the script and everything you dreamed, and we try to write just whatever we want. But at some point, you're going to be forced to put that script into the box that is the movie. And, or that is the budget and the days you have to shoot. And, and that, that's the part where the script jumps up and slaps you in the face and the reality of like, whoa, this is going to be really hard for this kind of money, um, is, is kind of, a, it's part of the challenge, you know? Um, and during that part of putting the script in the box, that's where I am doing this book and I'm drawing everything out and I'm trying to find ways to tackle some of the harder, technical parts of the film and then also trying to tackle like there's a million story things that you have to tackle that you don't really think about and just in terms of mindset or where mm -hmm. the characters are going to be for instance in this movie there's a road trip at the start um i wanted and i battled pretty hard to make sure that, that road trip was at the end of the movie because i wanted these kids to know each other throughout the shoot interesting and and be mm -hmm. able to bring that sort of um friendship that real friendship to screen and that that was really important you know that was like something that you know you wouldn't really think about until you're in that situation like how do you get you know a girl from manchester england and a kid from australia and another kid from la to like yeah. be best friends right, you know yeah. uh 
you, you mentioned the cast, which is very, very good. Talented group of people. Was it Brendan Thwaites? Yeah, Brendan Olivia Thwaites. Cook. Uh, and Bo uh, Nap. And uh, Lawrence Fishburne. And Lawrence too. Fishburne. <laughs> um, pretty small group of uh, actors overall in the film. Um, what is it like in terms of trying to balance the thrills when you're working with a fairly small set of actors? And I mean, it seems like, you know, you, you, you have to... I don't know, find ways to scare that still allow you to have a small set of actors at the same time. Was this sort of like trying to balance all that? Um, you know, yeah, this was really cool in a sense that all these kids are kind of coming up, I think, right now. Very much so. And they're yeah. all sort of breaking out. And they are just really good people, like who work so hard and put everything out there. And, and to have that on one side of the picture and to have them all excited to be there and pumped to get into their characters and pumped to shoot extra stuff on the weekends. Or at the very end, we all got into a car and did like a mini road trip from Cleveland to St. Louis. And it was just me and the kids. That's awesome. And a lot of the stuff that's even in the trailer, that's like the amazing. swings and that kind of stuff, that's all just wow. from on the road with them. Um, and so I had a really talented group of kids that, that, uh, we're willing to do that. In, in, in all honesty, when you're doing these, when you're doing casting at this level, we had Mary Renew, who's super talented uh, casting director, um, and, and Venus. These two were putting really great people in front of me. We're all really talented, but at the end of the day, it was the kids who were sort of the most honest and seemed like they were the, uh, you know, just really good human beings that would be able to sort of work hard and, and really bring it and be the kids that they're supposed to be in the movie. Um, and then, so to have that sort of gusto on one side of the picture and then to have somebody with as much weight and who's been through so, uh, so many different amazing movies like Lawrence Fishburne really brought kind of a sense of like, um, professionalism and like sure, we're yeah. like really making a real movie feeling to the movie, <laughs> you know? And so, um, and he was such a good dude. Like, uh, you know, it was t like the role he was playing in the suit he's playing in, like it's like a hundred and bazillion degrees in Albuquerque, and he's just in this thing, oh, never Albuquerque. complaining. Now you're speaking my language. So, I'm from Santa Fe. So oh no way! Yeah, yeah, we shot the whole movie in Albuquerque. That's fantastic. So we shot up at Cochiti, uh, which is like a lake just yeah, outside yeah, Santa yeah, Fe. Yeah, yeah. We shot all over the place. That's so. fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no meth in this movie, as far as I no. recall. Um, <laughs> One of the interesting things that's really important to this movie is sort of balancing, um, I guess it's both the, the pace of the scares and the reveals of the sort of sci-fi elements. Because one of the things that's nice about the movie is you do a good job of sort of like slipping into the beginning of the sci-fi portion of it. Um, what is it like in terms of trying to not, say, overwhelm the audience too much too early with like the sci-fi side of things and sort of definitely keep it in a lot of ways, very tangible in terms of the fear. Like, I mean, the facility that they're in has a lot of, like, alarming things, but at the same time, it's like, this is this is theoretically probably something that occurs with the CIA and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. I mean, around this country somewhere. Sure, sure. Um, you know, it's just, I, I think, like, I'm a fan of my own stuff, so you're constantly kind of trying to, like, <laughs> judge, all right, is this, what's the right tone here, or what's you know, you just try to track your own sort of like trust in your own ideas that that you you are um, keeping uh, like a sense of slow burn or a sense of slow progression. And you know, sometimes you shoot certain things out of order, so it's a little tricky to be like, hey, what level was I at here? Because I want to make sure I'm not like too high here, or right, too low yeah. here. So you're constantly trying to track that kind of a thing. But for the most part, I just go to movies that I love, and I'm like, well. In this part, I've always been a fan of Blair Witch, and that really worked right there. So uh, I'm going to channel I that. I you know? know exactly and, what you're thinking about when you reference that. So, sure, like, yeah. yeah. So you're kind of – I just channel things that I love and that I was a fan of, and then I try to use them. And some people go, oh, it's your genre bending or you're doing this or doing that. And honestly, I'm, I don't – I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to sort of use the tools from different movies that I love and, and go, wow, that made me feel that way, so I'm going to plug that in here. You spoke earlier about the Twilight Zone being sort of like the thing that sort of pushed you in this direction. Um, 
what what is sort of like um, when you speak of watching films you love? What was it that really, I guess, inspired the the notion behind this film? I mean, were you a sci-fi lover growing up? Were you a horror fan? What sort of was was your sort of niche as a kid? And did that play into this being something like you would have loved to see as a younger version of yourself? Um, I mean, I always tell people I make movies for the 17, 18 year old version of me. But <laughs> I mean, I guess I probably haven't really grown up since then. So I'm still making movies for me. But I'm just a fan of a lot of different things that all sort of inspire the whole gamut so it's like if i there's certain anime elements that i love mm. there are spaghetti western elements with super tights and then big wides following just after so you know they're all kind of wrapped up in there um and in terms of twilight zone and outer limit things i just always loved stories where i was like what is going on trying to sort of peg where i was in the story but mm. it was a ride getting there because i was constantly checking myself going wait what is happening right now and that to me is the kind of film that always makes me like go home and and suddenly I catch myself thinking about it a couple of days later and suddenly I'm like God I can't stop thinking about that yeah. like what what was happening you I know and I like that engagement that. Mm-hmm. down yeah. the road so so the film is the signal uh, what is the plan for the release of it and where can people find more information out about it um, we are I think Signal Movie on Twitter I'm Super Swift on Twitter. Um, comes out Friday the 13th in June. Oh, fantastic. So uh, limited release first. I think it's going to 30 markets or 100 theaters or something, and then it will okay. expand from there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there, it's sort of a real grassroots campaign, so hopefully people see it, they dig it, they tell it to their friends. Um, so, yeah, our That's Focus great. Features is releasing it, so there's a lot of information on their website about it, I think. <laughs> so. uh, very cool. I definitely recommend people check it out. Um, in terms of you, you mentioned your Twitter. Is there any other stuff you have coming up that people might keep their eyes peeled for? Or is your Twitter the best place to keep up to date with what you got going Twitter. on? Yeah, I mean, that's usually where I sort of have stuff. I, I don't know how much I post about advanced projects. But, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a bunch of d- two different things. One with the same writers uh, as this. Uh, that's sort of a, a movie about a mining operation in South Africa. Hmm. Where um, Dan covers something really weird, um, and then I have uh, another movie that is totally different, and it's sort of a, a Scottish Highlander project that I'm writing with a British writer. Very cool. Sort of loosely based on the Norman invasion of England. So Very some cool. weird stuff. <laughs> Keep tuned. We'll see. If Stay tuned. It comes. Yeah. Hopefully, you'll be at SIF in another couple yes, of years now. That's the uh, idea. Now that you're a regular. Um, well, thank you so much, Will. I look forward to seeing what happens when this gets out to everyone else, and. Uh, Cool, man. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers.